So this is the this is the CRM room. We're we're moving into our second CRM session. So Rishi's going to talk about we're going to we're going to do a deeper dive into Zoho CRM. The previous session. Sorry. Oh, you're doing the second one. No, no, he is doing. Oh, you're not doing the automation one. No, that is next. Ah, uh, okay. So what's this one on? Giving more of this module talk about the most modules and the inventory. Oh, right, right, right. Okay. Sorry, my my uh, my confusion. So this session we're going to look at uh, some of the other modules that you may um, not be familiar with that are inside Zoho CRM. So like our inventory uh, module, our marketing module. So you'll have a look at how CRM ties into other aspects of your business operations. So without further ado. Before we begin, I just have a quick question. Who is using the marketing modules currently inside Zoho? Talk, referring to campaigns and mass emailing. All right, who is using the product inventory modules, product price books, quotes, sales orders, yes, invoices? Who is using cases and solutions? Okay. All right, sounds good. That's basically what we're going to cover. And at the end, we're going to go into the mobile edition as well, just a little bit. So we do have a lot to cover in this session, so I'm going to go a little bit faster so we have time for questions. Like I said, if, you, if we don't get to your question, just find me. I'll be here all day, and we'll sit down and go through your, your question. But here's a quote from one of our bloggers saying Zoho really has a mini ERP system under the disguise of the CRM label. This is basically referring to the marketing, inventory, and ticketing system that's built into Zoho. All right, so here's our outline. We're going to begin with marketing. And this is what we're going to cover under marketing. We're going to go into campaign management, how to create and associate campaigns. We're going to talk about mass emailing and what autoresponders are, and those are only in the Enterprise Edition, if you have not seen them in your version. And then we'll cover a little bit on web forms. Um, Rishi's going to go into more detail about web form creation. I'll just um, give you a, a summary of what they can do. Who here is using any of the built-in web forms inside Zoho? OK, plenty of people. Who here wants to use the web forms? OK, sounds good. All right, let's start with campaigns. So inside Zoho, a campaign is a marketing process that's been, uh, that's been planned, executed, distributed, and analyzed. Basically, this is like a television commercial, a radio ad, a newsletter, something you want to keep track of in the system. You want to allocate a budget towards it, how many leads you think you're going to obtain from there, how much you expect to make from that, and then how much you actually made, and then running a report against that. So that's what this is referring to. It's just that particular ad or newsletter or something else that you're, that you're running. It's not referring to mass emailing it at all. So, so I know some people think the, the campaign module refers to mass emailing. This is specifically on your ad or advertisement. All right. Once you uh, have a campaign, then you can either import the leads or contacts into that campaign or go into the leads section and look up that campaign and associate it the other way around. All right, so let's look at the campaigns section. So I'm going to create a campaign for you just to show how that works. So let's say you're running a television ad on a certain channel. So I'm going to call this the channel one ad. Like we saw earlier, we can customize all of our fields. So if that option is not on here, then you can go ahead and add it, or you can change up the entire list here, or maybe just not use it at all. You can have a status for this campaign if it's already started, if it's completed, so if you want to go back and add it later, 
or whatever stage you're running it on. This is really for reporting. If you want to run a report on active campaigns or run a report on closed campaigns, things like that, you don't have to use anything that's not in red. Like I had said earlier, you can hide that field if it's just not important. So we're running a campaign. Let's say we're running it for the month. And from this TV ad, I'm expecting maybe $1,000 in revenue. And it's costing me maybe $500 to run. So this is how much I budgeted towards it. So let's say it only cost me the 400 out of my budget. You know, and I expect, let's say I expect five leads to be gathered from this ad. Any other fields you want to create in here, you can go ahead and create. This is a company that I'm using an example of a, with a company I work with. They were running ads every month on different TV channels. So they kept track this way. So when the lead would call in saying, I saw your ad, they know exactly which campaign to set it to and then they could run a report at the end of the year and see which ads and which newsletters, which television ads generated the most revenue in the system. Here, this, if, you know, if you're running a, a newsletter, then you can put, you know, you sent 100 out and you expect five to give you a response. In this case, this wouldn't make sense, so I'm just going to leave it blank. And the campaign's been saved. So here, this button here will show a summary of the campaign. So if I click on one that I've already made, It shows me I've gathered here four leads from that campaign, two have become contacts, zero potentials, which means I have zero revenue from this campaign so far. And then on the bottom, it shows what leads were gathered from there. So just like in the import leads section under leads, you can do the same thing here. You click on import leads and let's say you have a list, like you went to a trade show, you gathered a list of 100 leads, you can import that CSV file or Excel file straight into here. They'll all be associated with that campaign and then you can get to work in tracking them through the sales process. Questions? What do you want to market to an existing lead group? Okay, so then you can filter out those leads, go into the lead, scroll down, and then you can add the campaign from here. Whoa, whoa, wait a minute. You mean go into individual leads? Yes. So what if I have, a, so say we have 10,000 customers and I want to mail 5,000? So you want to associate all 5,000 to that? Just say 1,000. One, one Would I do that 1,000 times? Okay. So you can also do a, let's see, mass update would not work in this case. So go here, add existing leads, and you can set the criteria. Okay. So you base it on a field, see if you have that group. Is that, is that new? Is that, that new? That, that little thing to add existing leads to a account campaign? Rishi, is this feature new in here? Or is it relatively new? Relatively new. Do you know? He's asking if this feature is new to add like leads based on criteria into a campaign. Yeah, it's a new one. It's new? It's a new one, okay. So we can market to that list now. So if we create the list, so that list is automatically attached to the campaign and we can just easily market yes. to that list. Yeah, exactly. yeah. And, and then okay, you'll so fill. You're balancing act of hope and prayer. Right, because then yeah, you can filter that list and do a mass email f to that list, yeah. Yeah, we right. recently enhanced our campaign module yeah. so that you can uh, add existing leads and you can add a lead to multiple campaigns. I'd like to be the first to thank you for that. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> All right. Question. Hmm? Yes. When we download conference information, it will come in as a lead when they are a potential or a Okay, so they're already coming in. So here, if you scroll down, you can add the contacts as well. It says import contacts. So you don't have to import them as leads. You can import them as straight contacts. If you get a list of 500 names from a... So you want to check for duplicates, you mean? Exactly. Okay. Yeah, during import, you can do the... So here, I'll show you. In the enterprise version... But it's only if they're, they're spelled exactly the same. Yeah, that's right. And that's not going to Well, it's, it's actually based on the email address. Yeah. Right? It's based on the email address. Duplicate check, check because happens, we can't, uh, we can't on base it on first ID. and last name because plenty of people have you know, the same name. So we have to base it on something unique. And the only thing that's unique for every single person is going to be their email address. So yes, if they gave you two different email addresses, it will add them twice. 
more than likely people use the same email address as their business contact. So it will find it, and then you can choose whether you want to skip it or override it. Okay. So, so will it check leads as well as... Contact? Yeah, anything you import it will check, but it's checking the email. It's checking the email field. So this, is, this, this option basically, if it finds a matching email, it won't add it. If it does find the matching email over here, it will add it on top. So hopefully someone's giving you new information, because if they've given you maybe an older address in the new list, then it's going to wipe out the original address. So that's, you know, that's one drawback of this function. Or you can clone everything and then use the deduplication function based on the email address later on. So in that case, all right, I, can, I mean, I can talk to you after. We can get something to the product team to change that. But as of now, that's, that's the only option for duplicates. All right, so here I have a chart just pulling my two campaigns, my February and March newsletter, just showing how many records I gathered from there. I'm just, I just show this simple group of, uh, this simple grouping report to show you, you can have like 10 different campaigns on there and show how many, how much was gathered from each campaign. Right. So in the campaign itself, under each person, you can even designate their status. So if you want to go into more detail, you can click and say if it was, you know, if they're already invited, if it was already sent. So like how you had sent that email, you can now update the member status to sent. So then you'll know that all these emails were sent. Because in our system, it won't automatically tell you who's been sent unless you click on the record, scroll down, and look at if there's a sent email. So you can change their member status then to know what work has been done. And then you can use the mass updating tool for that as well. All right, so a lot of you had mentioned you do mass emailing inside Zoho. The limit per day is 250 emails out of Zoho, which someone has already given me a thumbs down. Anyone else <laughs> want a thumbs down? <laughs> All right, um, we actually are working on changing that through a different application altogether and separating that out from CRM so that you can send thousands of emails a day. Um, that should be coming out hopefully within the next few months, a few more weeks, a few more weeks. It's going to be a, a separate emailing module. <laughs> All right. So this is yeah, understandable. This is more of a basic end, only 250 emails a day. We do have the scheduler, so you can schedule Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday to send 250 each day. And then, so you can only have three schedules at a time. So you have to add then Thursday through maybe Saturday, depending on how many records you have. So when you create a view, you're basing it on the criteria in your view, right? So on my leads, if I scroll down here, I've got 635. So if I select all and send an email, it's only going to do the, the 250. So what I have to do here is create three different views to split them up into 250 or less. So what I recommend is doing like criteria being alphabetical, like A through A through L and L through T, T through Z, splitting it up so then and then double checking to make sure there's less than 250 on each list. At that point, you can select all and send an email. Your other option, like I had mentioned, is to schedule a mass email. So you can create a schedule here and how you want it to start, when you want it to start, and choose what template you want it to start from. And this is also based on views. So your first view might be that first group of the alphabet, and then your second email schedule will be on the second group of the alphabet, and so on. We have um, also the ability in the template, you can add a unsubscribe form to the, to the bottom of the template so that someone can, it's not a checkbox, it'll be a link, and then they can fill in a form and then unsubscribe from the list. So here's basically a summary of what I had just said. All these slides will be available online so you don't have to copy everything down. So the other part of our mass emailing is the autoresponders. So this is going to let you schedule a series of messages to a record. For example, if someone sends you a, a web to lead form and you want to send a welcome email the first day, 
and then three days later send the sales reps information, and then five days later send, you know, are you still interested in the product kind of letter, then you can schedule three autoresponders based on certain criteria. That way, as soon as they submit the form, they'll get the welcome, and automatically three days later, they'll get, they'll get the, the sales reps information. All right? So that's, this is in the enterprise edition only. Let me just show you where that is. It's under the tools. <coughs> You'll be covering it. All right, so Rish is going to go more in depth into autoresponders. It's going to be in the same limit, 250 per day, but you can schedule them uh, based on certain dates as well. Do, do you see this feature also migrating to that new <coughs> module? Is it going to be in the next module, campaigns? The whole campaigns? Is it going to autoresponders, you know? Yeah, not sure about the features. So most likely we have all those. Uh, Features it's called Zoho Campaigns. It's going to be released really soon. It's going to have a lot of analytics for your emails as well, so you can get information back on your mass emailing. Yes? Will that Zoho Campaign write the email back into the CRM? Yes, it's going, to be, it's going to be integrated. We're basically splitting the campaigns and emails into another application, so you have a lot more features then to be able to use. And yes, they're going to be able to integrate. Yes? Um, I got a two part question actually. The first is can you make it dependent on a field in Zoho? Like if, if I change a lead status, can it automatically send an email based on that? You can have a workflow to assign a task to send the email, but you can't auto send the email. Okay. And then, uh, second question, can often these autoresponders, can that automatically log in Zoho under the lead that you sent? Yes, that will show up. Question. Yes. You mentioned that workflow for field change. So can you actually automate the assignment of that workflow? Do you mean uh, like assign, assigning the lead to someone else? Uh, you you mentioned that if you wanted to actually Send that email, you have to assign the workflow to send the email to someone. You have to assign it to a user, yes. Okay, but can you assign the assignment of the workflow? Right? Can you activate the workflow based on the assignment? Can you invoke the creation of the assignment of the workflow to that record if you make the change? Oh, like, uh, <laughs> how the system knows like the workflow or workflow has to be created for this particular thing? Well, I've seen it in other systems. Oh, okay. We can talk about it. Okay, no problem. <laughs> yes? We, we run a lot of, of autoresponders, we call them drip campaigns. And, and the thing that I, that's important for you guys to understand is I, I don't want my marketing guy spending all day trying to figure out if I'm going to exceed the 250 email limit because I got six different auto drip campaigns running on one That's really the problem with that limit is someone's got to go in and closely monitor and track it and create right. a list, is, it's just a disaster. So if you could get all of that stuff outside of that limit somehow, that would be very valuable to us. Right. And that, that was the inspiration behind creating a separate app completely, because I know some people have integrated a separate emailing system altogether and not even using the CRM. Right, MailChimp, Constant Contact. Yeah. So we're trying to create, we're in the process of creating our own now so that you can integrate with the CRM to take care of all these issues. Yes. A really simple request. When yep. you assign a task, you have to save the task, then go back in and edit it and ask it to send an email. Is there any way that when you assign a task, you could add that feature to the assignment phase instead of saving it and going back in and editing it and sending the email? You can you can send notification email. Uh, do you mean like in the in actual just creating a task here separately or in the workflow? Oh, Create uh, a new task like Paul Barber Brown. Okay, and, and then you're referring to this. And then, but that doesn't that doesn't show up all the time. Usually, if you just click on assign a task if you're already in the contact. That's there until you save it. <coughs> it's the same thing when you make the, uh, either uh, something on the schedule as an event or anything. You have to save it first and then go in and add anybody. Yeah. No. It's like on the side. Oh, on the side. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's a kind of a quick log of a task, so it's just a really quick summary. It doesn't show all the details. This is just the same thing on all of them, right? It just shows 
only some of the fields. At that yeah, point. that is uh, kind of quick create. So if you want yeah, to you create have to, a task. you'll have to add him from down here in order to get that option. It's just something you can create in a few seconds if you're in a rush, and then you can go ahead and edit it. Or you can, if you edit from, if you add it from here, then you'll you can. get all the options. Then you have all the options to send right. it. Thank you. So, okay. Yeah. In the uh, auto responders, can I uh, assign different labels or contexts to different uh, marking programs, different tracks? So, according to their response, let's say they click the link that I sent in the first email, then they'll move to a different nurturing program? No, the thing is, uh, those clicking links or opening the emails, all those things are coming as a feature in the new in service that is coming up. Okay. In autoresponders, you, you can just trigger emails to the list of contacts or leads. It's just, a, it's just a simple email. To get data back, that's why we're creating a separate app, so that you'll know if they've clicked on the link. Right. Okay. right. Well, they move, and then, can they move automatically according to their response into different... Nurturing? Yeah, those things is available in the new service which is coming up. Yes. Quotes, you're covering the quotes, right? When we get to the quote section, I'll cover that. Yeah, yes. he will cover that. <coughs> All right. So Rish is going to cover this in more detail, but um, your web forms can be created within the CRM to capture information and um, from your website itself. That creation system is going to be under setup and then website integration. It's going to be based on what fields you create inside each module. So you can select those fields to be on the form. If you have an assignment rule in place, you can set criteria, such as you know region equals southeast or something like that in the form, and it will assign to a certain person as the owner. Or it will come into the manager, and the manager can auto, oh, sorry, manually assign those leads or contacts. So Rishi will cover this in full. Um, in the next presentation. All right, so we're going to go into the inventory modules, products, price books, vendors, sales quotes, orders, and invoices. So this is taking it past just the CRM. So you can add your products in here, goods or services um, that are sold by your organization, track the sales start and end time, the support start and end time, and the actual quantity of the item. So if it, when you invoice the item, if you have 100 in stock and you invoice it, it will go down to 99 or however many you sold. And then you can set a reorder level to automatically send a purchase order, mm -hmm. and you'll create a template for your purchase order, and it will send out to your vendor. Speaking <coughs> of items, can you, can you go, go to the items, items tab on, on, like, uh, on like, like an account and show me how it works? Is, show me what the, what the, what the bot, bot was. Go to accounts, and you'll just pick an account with an item on it. So well, it says items there. How does that, how do you, how do you, how do you create a product to add, add a product? Right, so you'll just so look up. So I would think that that's like, what's the, what's the idea behind that? Is that like, I have an account and this is what they might want to purchase yes. from me? Yes, that's basically, that's all it's tracking. Have an account and this is what they have purchased from me? Right, what that's... What can we do to get that have purchased from me? Because if you have a lot of items, you don't want to like guess what people might, might, might want. It's, it's a lot more useful information to actually know what they've purchased from you in the past. Because right now, that's a huge problem for us. Is we go to our account and we say, what have you bought from us? And we don't actually know. We have to go to Quick, QuickBooks. We actually have a VPN set up, so our whole sales team logged into Quick, QuickBooks to go, mm -hmm. oh, you bought six of uh, product, product X and five of product Z. Yeah, once they purchase, probably if you add the products under right, that particular no, account. No, no, no. I'm talking about from the invoice. So I create an invoice, and okay. that should have those products should show up in the account. They don't. Oh, uh, okay. It only shows up as an invoice. Right. Well, right. yeah, but I, yeah. I don't know how many. I'd have to, then I'd you have, have to look through all the invoices, invoices. And manually add everything up at that point. You, you guys follow me? I understand yeah. what you're saying. It's the feature is not To know what people there. have purchased from you versus what they possibly might, might want. Like, who cares what they might possibly 
So from the invoice, you want to auto-populate the products uh, as, as shown, course, right? I want to do what QuickBook does or everything okay. else does. I mean, it's not, I'm not, and I'm not trying to, I mean, I love your product, and I'm not trying to, to bag on it or anything, but yeah, the way you guys are doing products or items makes zero, unless you can tell me, is there anyone here who can use an item like that, who know, wants to know what people could possibly want? Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. I think both is very important. All right. <laughs> Yeah, I'd love to see what, I'd love to know what people have heard purchased from us, just, okay. uh, just in general. Okay. Well, because it's usually I want to go to an invoice and I want to see what they've heard, like if I'm on a sales, sales call, sure. you know, you want to know what they what they purchased or write in the account. What is a You want just the products. Yeah. I bought 10 of these, 20 of these, and so on. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. The, the it's just, is there, it's, it's just limited to not showing, showing that, that. right, useful, right. Guess. Okay, I understand what you're saying. That feature is not there, but I can uh, ask the product. There is a kind of it. limitation as of now. So Pardon? it's a limitation, it's a limitation. He's saying, right. of the module. I, I was just curious how it was actually used because I never, I never could figure out a use case for it. Okay. Yeah, that's literally all it is. It's just they're interested in that in that product. They may not have bought it particularly. Yeah, they definitely didn't buy it because it didn't show up anywhere. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so then you would have to check the invoice to see exactly. if it's purchased. Yeah, you might only have a quote for it. You might not have right, all right. the way down. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Anyone else have any questions on the products module? Um, tax rates. Uh, you know, like, you can be able to sell me tax rates for California, uh, one for each county. How do we, you know, like, set it so we can enter in the zip code and hopefully it'll probably the correct tax rate? That's... I understand what you're saying on that too. Right now, we only have the one option for tax, and it's just a set tax rate. So it wouldn't work where you can set it by state. Okay. I can look into that if that's going to be a future addition. That's going to, that, that needs to be. Needs to be. Okay. For invoicing and sales order. Yeah. Yes. Can you say that one more time? So in other words, when I want to get a code, I can either A, select my inventory, right, one of the products, or I want to just type whatever I want. Oh, so it's, yeah, it's specifically a lookup field. We don't have it available as a text. You want it to be a text box instead, right? You can do either way. Or you can look it up. Yeah, ours is limited to you have to look up the product. So if it doesn't exist in the module, then you can't add it to the quote. So that's another limitation. Yes? I mean, I'm writing, I'm writing everything down. People are asking. That's the whole point of this conference. So <laughs> I'll let everyone know. Request card you can give us a form that or uh, a way, a form or an email address that we can send requests to? Because obviously everybody here has certain things they need and might be useful for you folks. To send a future request? Right. With to Zoho. Yeah. Yeah, you can send it to our support team. So hopefully you know the email address support at zohocrm.com. So all our requests. We have a person that looks at all the tickets and looks yeah. to see what the so most he popular collects information. The most popular information coming in through and most popular problems and enhancements are, and then he's taking a log of those and passing them to the product team. So if we get a lot of tickets on the same issue, then yes, it will be flagged by him and pass, passed to the product team. So we have a person who's designated just to do that. So. Yeah. Yes. Is there a way to customize the products for a service-based company? Like we don't have like, install, we don't have stock, so we don't need stock. So since the stock level is required, what I've recommended as a workaround for now is to add a ridiculously long number to the stock, because that's really all we can do right now. Because it does require a stock number, and we can't make that non-mandatory. So I've put like you know nine nines on there, so it never really depletes in stock. Yeah, that's that's the current workaround for that. Yeah. When we're in the mass delete of products, they only let us delete a hundred at a time. Is there any way we can You can delete more. Um, yeah, probably if you have imported a file into it. Have you imported you can the product? Just products? roll it back. I've imported a lot of products. So been So if you wanna roll back an import 
Not all of them. So it is limited to 100 at a time, yes? Because that's the maximum you can see per page. And you can select all and delete. The only other thing you can do is roll back on your import history the entire list. If you have a list that's been imported, you can pull it, the entire list back out. But yeah, that master list is limited to 100 records at a time. Yeah. Yes? One feature I like is the sales order. Add multiple products. Create the invoice. Uh, Pop place all those uh, products. Is there something similar for quotes? Where you can actually just have a template. Because one thing I'm trying to do is I may have like six products. I'm going to create a package around it. And I don't want to like, I want the salesperson to, you know, remember which one to use. It's not like the sales order, but I can only do on invoices. Is there something similar to that for quotes? So you, you mean like when you. So you want to auto populate the products into the quote, is what you're saying? Just copy the quote. Yeah, uh, you can use the clone function about the, uh, say for example, you can na name it like. Uh, uh, templates, uh, template one, template two kind of thing. And your sales reps can uh, access the template codes and uh, they can use the clone functionality and just change the name, all those details. Yeah, it'll pull most of the information. You only have to change just a little bit then. All right, we'll move on to price books. Who here uses price books? Okay, all right. So, uh, price books here are used to set pro uh, products at different prices based on agreements with that customer. So having like, you know, if you buy one to a hundred of this product, you'll get 25% off. It's the most simple price book that you can make. And um, the unit price is gonna be fixed by you, and then the list price is what's gonna be pulled from the price book itself. So we're gonna show here simple price book. If someone wants to give an example of price book, I have kind of an open forum here. If someone wants to give an example of how they're using the price book in the system and present it to everybody. Anyone want to share? No? All right. <laughs> so here's a price book here. So what I've designated on this product, so you have to associate your products to that price book. And then you can choose here for this phone that I've added in here. If the customer is buying 0 to 10, they're going to get a 25% discount. From 11 to 20, they're going to get a 50% discount. So when I go and create a quote here, down here after adding the product, choosing a quantity, so I had a 1 to 10 discount, so I'll put 5. And now at the list price, instead of putting the list price, I'll grab that price book and it will calculate that discount for you. Yes? Can, can that be used as a, uh, can you use fixed price, price books where, because uh, you apply the quantity to get a discount. Mm -hmm. As I was telling you last night, we made uh, the quantity is irrelevant for some of our customers, but they will pay X price for this. Okay, so you don't you don't worry about basically. So this is section, right? So this you can set it to flat, and then you don't have to worry about having a range like I had. This was a differential, so I could set one through ten, eleven through twenty. So. But it does, I mean, the way you're thinking is you don't want this range, right, at all. The only workaround would be to do something like that, right, as of now, because the, you can't hide that section in price books. So I have to create one of those for every SKU I have for customer. You can associate all those products to that one price book then. So if you have product A, B, and C, and you add product A to the quote, it's still the same price book that you've created. If you add product B, it's still the same price book because those two products are associated to that price book. However, if product D is not on that price book, it does need its own price book after that. So what you can do is add all your SKUs into one price book. 
uh, which I've done for someone before. They had 200 products into just one price book. If you choose any of those 200 products, that discount's going to apply. And we had a, a number like this because it didn't really matter if they were buying one or 20 of them at that point. So it's just set to the entire range. So how does this relate to when you issue a quote? Does it kind of take that discount into it? Yeah. So if you look at the quote that I created here, So it shows that, let's see, one. Oh, I think I changed it up there. So I'm giving a 25% discount here, right? So it's calculating 300 instead of, instead of 400. So just, it'll just auto-populate the, the amount for you. Of course, you can always go back and manually enter discounts as well if you don't use the price books. So one thing to remember is, like, like he has said, if you're giving discounts on all of your products, you have to add all of those products to every single price book. I had a 25% price book, 50%, 75% off price book. All the products are attached to it. So when you add that product and add that quantity, or in your case, no quantity, it's just automatically going to calculate because that product was in that price book. Yes. Can you import into the price book? You can import price books into the system. Um, there is an option to do that <coughs> here. It's just like the rest of our importing functions. You have to match the fields, match the fields up. Yes. Yes. Looking at that, like unique situation. So I have um, uh, surveys that the uh, more users take the surveys, you know, they give a higher discount. But the project management, on the other hand, is the more users you have, the higher the price. How do I set that up? Okay. Can you come see me after the presentation? We'll go over that. All right. Um, I'm going to have to go a little bit faster. I've only given two and a half minutes left to go through everything. So if we don't get to your questions, just, just find me after. All right. So vendor information, as I was referring, you can generate purchase orders when a certain quantity of a product be drops below a certain level. If you add all the vendor information, you can add a template for your purchase order and have that emailed to that vendor to buy more of that product. That's, that's simply just what the, what the vendors is for, just to enter the vendor information. Their address, their contact information, and contact details, things like that. So. Um, Templates, I don't have much time to go into the templates. I mean, you can create templates for sales orders, invoices, and quotes, and purchase orders in the system the same way you create an email template using merge fields. And then you can set you know, your company logo in there, the address. Um, if you need to create columns and a table, things like that, you can create in the template section. Um, this is just a description of what a quote is in our system. It's just a you know, legal agreement between the customer to deliver the products. So this is before you, know, you move into them actually ordering it, you create the quote, then the customer will order the product, and then you'll actually invoice it at that point. So it's three steps. So quote becomes a sales order, sales order becomes an invoice. That's when it's going to hit your quantity at this point. Okay. Right before this, I was just showing what a template looks like in the system. This is our default template, as you can see here. You're able to pull in your organization data, the customer data, all the product data, your tax and everything, and then put your logo in there as well. I still have to cover all of these modules in the next two minutes, so. <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, cases. This is basically a trouble tickets that you can log into the system. We have a separate module altogether called Zoho Supports. If you want to tra tag track all your tickets, link it to the contact, as well as run analytics on how many open tickets there are, who's assigned what ticket, etc. This is just a simple place for you to log a complaint about a customer or customer support. So when you generate a case, it will be linked to the contact. And then you can also create escalation rules on that case. So if the case, you change the field to escalated, you can assign it then to the manager of that team. So then the manager knows that this case has been escalated. It's something I need to take care of. Solutions is our knowledge base that you can build in the system. So you can have a Q&A or a, a FAQ or just, you know, if a customer asks about this, this is the answer. So it'll be question and an answer section. That's basically what solutions is for. Are, people, are a lot of people using solutions at all right now at this point? A little bit? Okay. 
This is something that's like a work in progress. As you get more and more common cases coming in, you can create solutions for your reps to use. And finally, I talk a little about the mobile edition. This, um, some good news was released today. We have an Android app available. So now the same app is available on Android and iPhone. And if you are paying for the app, you can actually edit, view, and delete your records. If you are getting the free version of the app, you can only view your records. So we don't have reporting or any of the product and inventory modules I covered today, but it does have the sales mo modules, leads, accounts, contacts, potentials, tasks, events, and calls. If This is the only version that's available offline. So if you're somewhere without internet, you can still make changes on this app, and it will sync up when you uh, grab a connection again. We're having a lot of difficulty with the syncing up for the mobile app. Yes. Um, do you know anything about that? Um, I can test it for you okay. later on. Yeah. Did you buy the mobile edition? Yes. Did no. you subscribe to the mobile edition? Yes. Okay. All right. We'll go over and see what's happening. Usually, sometimes you have to log out and restart the entire app. That sometimes fixes it. <laughs>